Gayle King, who had a show with Charles Barkley, and I say had because it has been canceled. And I can't say... uh, I never thought it should have been a show. Nobody was asking for this show. They didn't ask us if we wanted the show. Y'all just put two popular people together and said, here, they're going to have a conversation. Neither one of them are folk that I feel, to me, Charles Barkley is entertaining, but neither one of them are going to tell the truth at the level that we need to have. Y'all want to have a conversation with Americans? You're going to put Charles Barkley and Gail King in a... Y'all stop playing in our faces. Well, America has spoken and said, no, we don't want any of this. It has been canceled. King Charles, they gave their final sign-off. I didn't watch one moment of it except on clips. Um, and uh, so there's that. But Gail, and this is, you know, so Gail, Gail King had an opportunity to interview Dawn Staley, uh, who will probably go down in history as the best NCAA coach in history. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Undefeated season, national championship, third national championship for the great uh, South Carolina. And she interviewed her recently. And and this is, again, somebody trying to placate a, a, another person's vision of who we are to each other it was disgusting i'm gonna play this clip even though uh it was hard to find except somebody videotaped it off of their own television uh but play the clips miss happy for you guys coach today i'm so happy the game was such a good game it was so close at times and in the end you guys pulled it out but was there ever a point during the game when you were worried because i got worried we we were all cheering for iowa of course and caitlin clark but for so many people, you've got their heart. So, say what now? We were all cheering for Iowa and Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark. Gail King. Gail King, what are you doing? What are you doing, Gail? And here's what's so deep about this. You know what the coach of South Carolina knew? Woo! You know what this black woman knew? Caitlin Clark is excellent. She is really, really good. She knew that. No problem. This is nothing disparaging about Caitlin Clark. You know what the coach of, you know what this black woman knew? You do not win games with superheroes. You win games with team work. You win games with team effort. That woman knew that it takes a, she knew that if you're gonna sustain a village, you don't want one hero. You want people who, who can ho- uphold all parts of the village at the same time. And here's what's deep. We, oh, God, help me. We don't know the names of the people on her team. I do. I, I, I do, do Dr. But I mean, America. I, yes, yes, yeah, right, right. right. America, America, yes. Yeah, America doesn't know those girls' names, those young ladies' names, but they won. Undefeated. That, Freshman they, and sophomore. They've been we in, we in an awesome mess. Because what she w- realized is what African people have known since we got off boats, and that is only collective effort is going to save Black people in this country. Only the collective space is going to be the place whereby we thrive and we win. Do not get deluded by the individualism that America is trying to hand to you. Because you'll be popular for a minute, but you do not win. Come on. So what what do you think Gail King was thinking in that moment? Because we weren't all cheering. And and if many if anything, the the whole entire final four, starting with the game between Andrew Reese's team, LSU, Absolutely. Kim Mulkey's team, Absolutely. and Caitlin Clark's Iowa team, that was a racial divide, right? Absolutely. That 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 Gail King with her Coco Almondine skin. And melanin would open her mouth to say we were all cheering for Iowa and Caitlin Clark was like, why would she say something like that? Is, is she that? Uh, uh, but this is what, it, happens, what the hell? Brother, Greg Carr and I talk about this. This is what happens when black folks take the ivory tower as their home. Oof. They then start soliciting and eliciting praise for things that seemingly uphold that tower. And that's exactly what Gail King did. Which, to mention, we, we all pulling, what? First of all, we all were. And, and she's, Caitlin's fine and all of that. But come on, come on some. First of wow. all, 
Ma'am, South, uh, this team of black women, you better be careful. But again, what I really love is this coach, she could have gotten sidetracked, but she didn't because what she knew was true yesterday and is going to be true tomorrow. And that is a collective effort will always beat an individual performance. Always. So I'm going to ask it, uh, another question. What is America's and the world's obsession with heroes? Why do we need heroes when you're absolutely right? You know, it's it's all of us working together as a team, filling filling the roles that we all individually have to come together to to make something good happen or to win at, you know, like e even wins and losses is so like it's so antithetical to building society like it that is. one person has to win, you it know. And Karen, I'm, you know, you, you invite me on here, you know, to be honest and truthful. So, you know, that's what I'm going to do, right? Yes, that's I what I'm going to be, right? Yes. Uh, and, and I love this opportunity to do, to do that. Most people in America believe that by being an individual, by being, an, you know, individualism is so glorified here. They think they're being like God. Okay. Because look at what God did all by God's self. God created a world. God created everything by God's self. Here's what's really deep. Do you know Christianity and Islam are, are two of the only religions, it's not the only, but two of them. In other words, Western religions tend to be built upon this individual notion of one divine thing. If you take traditional, I'm, woo, Karen, <laughs> if, <laughs> come on, history. Come on, history. Listen, if you take most indigenous cultures, most indigenous communities, they conceived of divinity in multiple manifestations. Like, like in Africa, if, if you take Ifa, there is Olurun, there's 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 Yemen Ya, there's Oshun. These are manifestations of a divine God. Right. But that's in most Native American cultures. There's not one in, there's not one thing that's divine and everything else is 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 secular. No, 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 no. God, God nest, divine things, celestial heavens have multiple divinities here in the West, though. And even in the way God is depicted in the Bible. And the reason I feel free to critique the way God is predicted in the Bible is because I'm not talking about the creator. I'm talking about the thing we created right, called God. And that God figure is, in fact, in so many ways, God biblically is a patriarch. God biblically, biblically, right, is a material, is a capitalist. God sanctioned the murder of entire peoples so that other people can be the favorite chosen people. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> you know what's wild about this um, conversation? Somebody's uncomfortable right now. Good, 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 good. That's where growth happens. Please sit in the discomfort. Um, I arrived at my faith walk and understood immediately at some point when I when it all came together mm -hmm. that in order for God to be omniscient and uh, omnipotent requires all of us to be our full selves to make the tech like we all like i think of god like we're all god blown into a billion pieces and we need to be our own unique shape and self and fit in with the other pieces and even jesus said and ye are gods ye are god like like he he, he signaled to us what the goal is right for us to be completely not like anyone other than ourselves to fit into even the 12 disciples that he picked were all different people absolutely and he was showing us that it was important for us to to look and be our full selves to show the fullness and range of god like we're making god so small i'm sorry we weren't supposed to have this conversation today but i'm like i look at how small we make god just by making and other people small, small we make God small so that we and God can be equal. Yo. All right. Eight, six, six, eight, six, why would God yes. be insecure? Why couldn't I be like God? How is God's humility challenged if I were to be divine like God? You mean tell me God's self-esteem and God's self-worth is up for grabs <laughs> because he, God is threatened by my potential divinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to see
say yes I, 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 I need you to do more and say less I, 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 I want to say yes I, 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 I need you to do more and say less